I learned my love is. Today I bring you another reflection from my quiet moments. Sometimes I just have a quiet time. I write down a few things about life, my observations, and just my thoughts about life. And sometimes I want to share some of those thoughts with you. So thanks for always listening. My Footprints family, it's amazing to know that you're here. And my hope is I may touch someone out there, just one person. And I know that this is possible. So thank you. So today I wanted to talk about an ungrateful heart or signs of ingratitude. And from my observation, I noticed that an ungrateful heart keeps asking. It never stops asking and it asks without consideration for the giver. The ungrateful heart will smile when its needs have been met, but will quickly switch sides when the giver can no longer meet those demands. To the ungrateful heart, the giver is only as good as they keep giving. At a single sign of a no or even a wait, the ungrateful heart develops amnesia turning its back on the one whose praises it sang yesterday. The ungrateful heart shows no concern for the giver. Little concern, you may say, in some cases. And the ungrateful heart does not really care about what's going on in the giver's life, about the giver's plight. The ungrateful heart is like a parasite. It keeps feeding and feeding, undermining the well-being of the host. It never accepts no from its benefactor. The ungrateful heart is entitled, bitter and self-centered. The ungrateful heart is exploitative, insatiable. The ungrateful heart always plays the victim. This might sound like some ungrateful person you know, but sadly, ingratitude sometimes seems like an integral part of our human nature. Most of us don't understand gratitude, especially in our relationship with God. But we must always remember that life is a gift. So we should never take anything we've been given, everything we have, or even the things we've been given the grace to acquire. We should never take anything for granted. We all are on a journey and love is the only debt we owe each other. So stop going around acting like someone out there owes you something that if they don't give you, you get mad. A life of gratitude, for me, is a life of peace, of true love. We have to learn to ask from a place of grace, not from a place of entitlement. And when I talk about asking, I'm not just asking from my neighbor. I'm, just talking, I'm not just talking about asking from our neighbor. I'm talking about asking even from God. We have to ask from a place of gratitude. We have to ask from a place of grace. We don't have to sound entitled. We don't have to be entitled when we ask. You know, if we ask from a place of grace and not a place of entitlement, I believe that we'll be grateful for whatever gift we get. And we'll continue to remember that the world does not owe us any favor. And that way we'll be content, content, not complacent. Because when you operate from a place of contentment, you tend to view life differently. Most people, the people that we look from out far and we think they are happy, a lot of these people, they just have understood the rule of contentment and gratitude. And that's why they seem to have a life of peace. It's not because they have everything um, sorted. Believe me, everyone has their struggles. Everyone has their challenges. But when we come to live a life of contentment, when we come to understand the beauty in the life of, a, in the life of contentment and gratitude, then we'll begin to experience peace. I'm saying this to you, I'm saying this to myself, I'm saying this to anyone out there who might need this information. The life I have now is a prayer point for someone. The life you have 
is a prayer point for someone. So be grateful while you remain hopeful. Keep working. Keep dreaming. But it all has to be from a place of gratitude, a place of contentment. Thank you.